It's too dumb. I can't say the words. <laughs> Give me just a second. Is your life like the worst? If you shop Sportsman's Guide and use code WARPOET, it, your life is unlikely to change very much. Let's be honest. But you will save $20 off orders of $100 or more on all purchases, excluding ammunition. Sportsman's Guide. Sportsman's Guide. <laughs> Let's wrap it. Hey folks, I am joined again by Clint Emerson. We've already done some cool stuff and videos. Check below in the description for links to that. Clint is the writer of Hunter Deadly Skills, Escape the Wolf, some other stuff. He was a former SEAL and spy, and I'm getting through this stuff pretty darn quick. Oh, you're good at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, good bio. I am a love professional it. YouTuber, which... My ego inflates every time. I love it. <laughs> Say hello to the people, man. Hey, how's it going? Very Thanks good. Thanks for having me. So uh, what I'm interested in, and I, I don't know what the huge payoff is, but I'm interested in surveillance, counter surveillance kind of stuff. I took a couple counter surveillance courses in the past. I thought I would be really good at it just because I'm a dude and dudes yeah. have that. Yeah. And I really sucked. I mean, I was bad. Beard. Beard. I, I don't, yeah. Anyway, I was just bad. <laughs> I, in my head, I thought it was great and I wasn't doing well. And what it did is it gave me an early appreciation for the difficulty of surveillance, counter surveillance, and really just how important all that stuff is. So I wanted some kind of easy turnkey solutions, a, a little bit surveillance equipment 101 for somebody on the move. So we, we, we're not wiring a bunch of cameras and putting stuff in the back of TVs kind of stuff, just field expedient surveillance. Right. So we're simplifying it a little bit. So uh, what we have is a, a couple of different products. All of these things communicate in different ways. I like to always start with a cell phone. Now this is more of a drop phone that was bought overseas and it takes SIM cards in order for it to work. I bring, I bring this up because for all of you out there, your cell phone is your number one vulnerability when it comes to te technical surveillance, especially if you travel abroad. The minute you turn on that American purchase phone, overseas switchboards used to be you know pulling cords and connecting lines and operators and all that now it's software so a switchboard overseas can literally be on a laptop and when you turn on your American phone it literally will list it on the switchboard as an American just turned on their phone wow. so right off the bat you're identified right and we kind of want to reduce that so to reduce it if you can buy a local phone do so and then keep it this one I bought in Africa and I've had it ever since. Anytime I travel, um, it's nice to have a backup that's on a local plan and doesn't scream American, right? right. Uh, and then you won't be popping up to the top of the list um, for one, surveillance that you really don't want or need, right? right? Americans tend to get focused on in certain countries. They assume any American coming in the country has got to be a spy. Right. And the worst thing you for an average person is to have a whole bunch of people following you just because you turned on your phone. Making right. sense? So it's a little bit of, um, you know, it could can be considered prepper slash paranoid, but it's somewhere in the middle. Use an overseas phone when you're overseas. Okay? Makes That's sense. key. <clears throat> now, what if your phone's on airplane mode or it's off? Does it matter? Um, I mean, off is not really off these days. The reason you cannot remove your battery anymore is because each battery has its own processor, which means the phone is never truly off. The only way you can render any phone safe is by completely removing the battery. And even on some phones, depending on the platform, there's still a battery, a permanent battery inside that you don't know about that kind of keeps things up to date and running even when it's off. Right. Okay, so the best thing you can do, turn it off and then remove the battery, or you can throw it in like the sleeves we've discussed, you know, zero trace where it blocks signals and all that. And there's a lot of different stuff out there that you could leverage. Cool. We'll have links below for that. I'm interested in that. I'm actually going to steal some from your shop. Sure. Uh, you don't have that room light 
surveillance journey. No, just steal as many as you want. Oh, nobody, nobody will know. So, wait, this is awkward because <laughs> now you know about my scheme and yeah. I feel embarrassed. Yeah, but if you're pushing it, it's okay. Eh. Yeah, I'll make the money back, hopefully. All right. Um, next, we always hear about audio and video, right? Video seems to be the one thing that can get you in trouble these days and you have to be aware of it. This used to be considered small. And this is a WaTec, which is a real you know, somewhat expensive CCD camera. Uh, the chip inside has the, uh, I think, the, I believe it has the X-Drive made by Sony, which makes it nice and sensitive. Um, it can collect a lot of imagery, even in low light, and it's also got a color option, so you can go back and forth between black and white and cover. Um, black and white is the preferred choice for surveillance because if there are, isn't much light, black and white still gives you what you need most of the time. But now imagine, this used to be considered small, and this is, you know, 10 years old. Now, you take something like this, and we'll probably have to zoom in at some point on this, but you can see that this is the size, really, of a pinhead lens at the end of this little chip and then you've got your power and everything. So, point being is cameras can be installed just about anywhere these days. And with the, this doesn't draw hardly any power. So, back in the day, you used to have to go in and service any of your installs. If you installed a camera, you knew, you did some calculations, it was like, oh, I gotta go back in three days and literally switch the batteries out. Unless you did parasitic power, which means you're hooking it up to something right. in the room that already is providing power and it's pushing the signal out. Um, but with something like this, you don't have to worry about going and servicing it like you used to, right? So technology is getting smaller, faster, lighter, cheaper. Bad guys can certainly afford all of this now, where back in the day, they couldn't. And it's something to be aware of, whether you're hotel rooms, Airbnbs, cameras can be anywhere, all right? So always assume you're being watched and kind of question the things that you do uh, even in privacy. So Airbnbs make me nervous because it's like someone's own home and like wiring that junk up. I yeah. feel a little ner Every time I go into a hotel room, I'm always looking for signs that someone's trying to surveil me. But an Airbnb especially, I yeah. feel like it's a ho much higher likelihood. It is that true? Or? I, you know, I don't know the statistics, but I would just assume okay. that you're being watched. And anecdotal assumptions yes. from you is what I'm looking it's for. That's great. It's a good idea just to, you know, if you assume you're being watched, heard, and followed, then you're probably always going to be doing the right thing. But big brother's in my pocket, so that's <laughs> definitely true. This yeah. is where everyone, I want you to sound off in the comments if you've ever said something out loud and then all of a sudden checked your technology and there it was. I want to know that story. Put it below in the comments, and those are really fun and very spooky to read, but hopefully it'll underscore the importance of what, just, uh, what Clint just said of Assume, assume, assume. It's all cataloged forever. So, yeah. all right, let's uh, keep going. Yeah, so scary. And, uh, another aspect of collection, right? You got audio and video. Then you have your SIM cards in your phones. Uh, so this is a this is a SIM card reader, right? So if I if I got a hold of your SIM card in your phone and put it in here and then plugged it into my laptop, now I can collect everything that's on your phone is going to be on that SIM card. That's phone numbers, contacts, uh, you name it. It can all be put on there and downloaded in a couple of seconds. So the point to this is, is always keep your devices with you. Do not leave any of your mobile devices behind in a hotel room and don't think for a second that the hotel room safe is actually safe because management always has access to that. Management in a lot of countries their second income is actually providing stuff to their government. Uh, so don't think for a second that your stuff is safe in a hotel safe overseas, right? Awesome. Keep everything with you, a messenger bag, backpack, whatever. Do not leave it behind because it's that easy to collect off of it. Um, key loggers, right? If you left your laptop behind, I can go up with this little guy, plug in, load it in a couple of seconds. Now your computer will send me everything you type. So passwords when you're logging into your banking accounts, um, the messages, your business, whatever it is that's sensitive to you now just belongs to the person who put that key logger on. So once again, do not leave your devices unattended. Um, tracking. 
tracking is a big deal. These tracking devices happen to be about 15 years old and they're still, you know, somewhat small. Right. Um, they come with earth magnets so that they easily attach underneath to the car frame. The thing about tracking devices in order for them to work, um, there's, a, there's several things, right? They have, to have, they have to be able to see the sky. So they can't be encapsulated in anything metal. So a lot of times when they're stuck on a vehicle, they're somewhat visible, meaning physical inspection is a great way to determine whether or not you have something like this. Or they could be tossed under a seat in a vehicle, right? So they're not gonna be able to be buried too far or else it can't see the sky. If it can't see the sky, then it can't locate itself. And then the way they communicate back to software is either GSM or CDMA which once again goes back to SIM cards that you would plug into this and they communicate over data via cell phone towers. Um, and if you got really pricey ones, it could have a, a satellite um, transponder in it. That means it can collect and push back and forth via satellite so that if this happens to go out in the middle of nowhere where there is no cell phone service, at least satellite will still tell me where it's at. Making sense? Yes. So they come in a variety of shapes. They're a lot smaller now. We're talking devices that are smaller than this, which is a camera, um, are now all compressed into a tracking device that can be simply just put underneath your car. Once again, everything is um, communicating faster, it's cheaper, and battery lives are a lot longer, so they don't have to be serviced the way they used to. And all of these are programmable. I can tell it. Um, I only want you to track this person when they leave a certain geofenced area. Mm -hmm. So you can draw a box on the software on Google Earth around the person's house, and then as soon as they leave that box, now it starts tracking, or when it comes back into the box, it notifies you. Right. So you can really break these down to where one, the battery lasts forever, but two, really determine someone's pattern of life. So, what does that mean for you? Just, you know, know that these, these, this types of technology exist and that it can be used against you. Um, the angry girlfriend or boyfriend scenario um, and keeping your whereabouts isn't all that difficult anymore. It's actually pretty scary how small and easy this stuff is to purchase right off the internet. Yeah, I, I think there's, nobody wants to assume that this stuff's happening, but if you have somebody that's just clearly, you know, that uh, stalker kind of thing. Yeah. Don't put it past them. No, th this would be very attractive to them, I think. So uh, I, I don't think this is just for secret squirrel stuff overseas. I mean, just this is really out there. If you look for it, you can get this stuff. So uh, yeah, anyway, especially if you deal with the crazy exes and whatnot, yeah, oh, you yeah. probably take a, take a good hard look. I so, think the big takeaway really is you know, know that there's all kinds of technology that can be used against you. Um, there's a lot of technology out there that helps us every day, um, but unfortunately there's a lot of nefarious people that use it in a wrong way um, against, you know, strangers or people they know. So as long as you're aware of it and you can check for it and not be a victim of uh, some of this technology. Yeah, you seem like kind of a sketchy dude. I'm gonna just go ahead and assume all my stuff <laughs> is bugged. Can you hear me, Clint? Yeah. No. Tell, tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, said no. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. Guys, Clint Emerson hitting you up with some knowledge on surveillance, counter surveillance, a wealth of knowledge. I, I encourage you to uh, check him out. Thanks so much for schooling us up, man. Appreciate yeah, it. No cool. problem. Cool. Thank you for having me. Train hard, train smart. We'll see you next time.